Welcome, explorer. You just keep surviving, don't you? How impressive. We still can't decide if that's a blessing or a curse yet. Though perhaps a little time on level 6 will help clear up that confusion for you. Maybe it'll even be your light in the dark. <laughs> Sorry, bad joke. But you'll get it soon enough. You find your way into a hallway that looks like an entrance to a different place. Your sweating buckets, with the metal tendrils of the boiler room behind you, belching steam and exuding ambient heat. You thank whatever deity or invisible force you believe in for the fact you were able to fill up your almond water supplies from the pipes, because if you hadn't, you surely would have sweated to death from dehydration. As you approach the hallway, you see a handwritten note pinned to the entrance. Of course, you've learned to heed little clues like this, so you unpin the note and give it a read. It says the following. A couple days ago, I saw someone rush out of the entrance to level six. Well, rush is a strong word. He limped, his left eye was missing, he was clutching his chest, and one of his legs was clearly broken horribly and trailing blood. He looked like he shouldn't have been alive, and from the sound of what he was saying, he didn't think so either. He said he'd been attacked. That much was obvious. But the nature of what attacked him was particularly unnerving to me. Whatever it was, it screamed at him to get away from it before pinning him to the ground and clawing at him. He said it felt like human fingers. He said it sounded like a human voice. I don't know where he is now. Some MEG operatives whisked him away to get his wounds treated. Maybe he lived, maybe he didn't. But seeing that guy come out of that level in that shape, I still think about it. There aren't supposed to be any entities, right? So picture this. You're in a dark room. You can't see, there's no noise. Hell, you don't even know what it's made out of. Imagine you're in there for a while, say, five hours, and every so often you hear a little noise, like something's moving nearby. Wouldn't you start wondering what's going on? What might be going on around you that you don't know about? Wouldn't it start to eat at you a little after a while? Then by hour five, what would you do if something bumped into you? Even if it was a person, you wouldn't know that, would you? You wouldn't stop to consider what it might be. Rationality went out the window at hour three. You just need to survive. And maybe you'd walk away from it all, not knowing what horrible things you'd done in that darkness. Level six isn't dangerous because there's something there. It's dangerous because there's nothing there. Admittedly, you don't pay as much attention to the note as you probably should. While it's hard to admit, you've always been one of those people who kind of sees what they want to see in any given situation. After all, your galaxy brain idea to escape your crappy life was to invest all your energy into getting into this hellscape. And can you really say it improved anything? No. That's why, upon reading the note, your myopic takeaway is, wait, there are no entities on this level? That's awesome. After everything you've faced so far, you're beyond eager to jump into a new level with no actual threats. After all, you've got plenty of almond water and snacks. This should be a cakewalk, a wonderful little break from all the horrors you've dealt with. But when you actually enter, you begin to realize that your optimism for this place was a little misplaced. It is completely dark, just utter, impenetrable Vanta Black. You're in a universe that feels like it's never known light now. You pull out your most powerful flashlight and switch it on to shed a little light on the situation, metaphorically and literally, but the light seems to simply not travel. Even when you put your hands right in front of your face, you don't see them. You realize suddenly why there are no entities here. This place could never support any kind of life. Only darkness lives here. You realize that you're going to need to make your way through this place through touch alone. You reach out and feel the clammy, smooth walls. It occurs to you suddenly just how incredibly quiet this place is. It might be the most silent place you've ever been. You can hear your own heart beating every inhale and exhale, the blood vessels pumping through your ears. You feel like you're on a level of the back rooms that somehow hadn't even loaded yet. 
You are the only asset in existence here. Your brain reorients to a new goal now. You need to get the hell out. So you begin moving through this oppressive blanket of darkness. All you can do is hug the walls and move forward, hoping that you don't trip over. That's why you need to move slowly too. If you tripped over and got turned around, you'd be irreparably lost in this place. And in this kind of darkness, they'd never even find your bones. Mm, what a nasty thought. So you try to push all these nasty thoughts out of your head and keep your eyes on the prize. You've survived every level up to now, even ones that were full of far more dangerous entities. You can survive this one too, right? But there's undeniably something about the darkness and the silence that takes on a frightening life of its own, an oppressive effect on your already fragile mental health. As the minutes, then hours pass, you begin to hear strange things in the dark, like scuttling sounds, footsteps. Was that someone else breathing? Oh no, oh no. The paranoia is starting to set in. But didn't that note say that there were no entities in here? It must be your mind playing tricks on you, right? But what if it isn't? Suddenly a terrible thought crosses your mind and flushes your system with a surge of icy dread. The back rooms are filled with tricksters. Windows that look normal but are ready to pull you to your death. Monsters disguised as puddles. Beasts that masquerade as humans by stealing and wearing their skin for God's sake. What's to say that a human being wrote that letter you read? Wouldn't that be the perfect cover for a malicious intelligent entity? Writing a note basically telling you to let your guard down while it waits inside ready for the kill? Your calm composure plummets into a pit of anxiety and fear. Are you alone in here? You keep hearing those noises. Scuttling, chittering, whispers. What could it be? A six-foot cockroach with a switchblade or a giant unkillable spider who wants to drink your liquefied guts? Or something so much worse? Something truly unknowable? Something truly, cosmically, nightmarish? You're prepared to walk into some Lovecraftian fever dream, but instead something else somehow steps from the darkness, illuminated by some unknowable light source. And it isn't some eldritch beast, it's worse. It's your old boss, Mr. Bateman. The one who fired you from the last job you had before you decided to give it all up for the backroom's embrace. He's wearing that same nasty, hate-filled sneer from the day he called you into his office to give you the axe, sending you back into poverty. He rolls his eyes dismissively. So this is where you went after I canned your sorry ass, he says with a cruel chuckle. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. Of course you'd run away from responsibility into some strange dark crevice like the worthless little insect you are. <laughs> Good thing too. Better wasting away in here than adding to the surplus population back on Earth. <laughs> but now one thing, you're going to be as useless here as you were out there. Never forget that. You're at a loss for words. Your body is shaking with a mix of rage and despair. How can this be happening, you wonder? Then it hits you. This is a hallucination. You remember reading an article a couple years back about how the mind needs stimuli. And when it's deprived of that stimuli, it avoids total madness by making its own. First with subtle auditory hallucinations, and if it persists for long enough, detailed audiovisual hallucinations. Like, for example, imagining your boss berating you in the bowels of the back rooms. It's all just an illusion created by your own mind. Though admittedly, that doesn't make it hurt any less to hear it. You push forward through him into the darkness, diffusing him into vapor. But his cruel words and your knowledge that they originated in the depths of your own mind wound you. It's only a few hours of walking in the darkness, feeling along the cold concrete of the walls that you get another ghostly hallucinatory visit from the past you wish you could forget. It's Mrs. Newman, one of your 11th grade teachers from high school. She always failed you, berated you, and kept you behind after class. Just seeing her there, enshrined in light like whatever the opposite of an angel is, you can feel yourself breaking out into a cold sweat. Fears and anxieties you haven't felt in a decade are clawing their way up the walls of your heart and into your mind. You'd genuinely rather deal with monsters. She clears her throat like she always did, and says in that same shrill voice that always cut right through you, 
Well, 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 fancy seeing you here in this dark and dismal place. It suits you. This is always what I assumed the inside of your head looked like. God, I knew you wouldn't amount to much. You were always a lousy kid. But this? This is something else. I hope you enjoy it here, because I know for a fact that this is where you belong. You can feel the tears stinging your eyes. She's not telling you anything you didn't know, but that doesn't make it hurt even a smidgen less to hear it relitigated all over again. After all, that's why you're here, isn't it? Because you were so worthless and pathetic out there, you needed to run away from reality. You knew there was no place for you in that world. So you hoped against hope that there would be some small place for you in this one, was there? You do what you've always tried to do, push through the pain and move on. Mrs. Newman shatters like glass and disappears as you walk through her. And just like that, you're in total darkness again, with silence as your only company. It is truly the loneliest place in the world, but that's fine. You lie to yourself, you're used to loneliness but not this kind of loneliness. Part of you could even pray to run into a smiler just so you'd have something to keep you company. You'd take attempts on your life over more emotional torment right now. It just hurts too much. It's several hours after that wandering and wobbling through the darkness that you encounter them. The ones that you thought, that you hope you would never see again. But there they are, emerging from the darkness, your dear old mom and dad. Brows twisted in disapproval and eyes burning with the low, gnawing malice that you know they've always had for you. You feel yourself getting weak at the knees. You try to form the words, but nothing comes out. Your fear and horror are bone deep. They speak, somehow using one voice between them, you are nothing. A waste of space. We wish we never had you. You made both our lives worse. Again, nothing you didn't already believe, but to hear it puts you through agony. Every word lacerates you. You begin to sob and just keep walking, having no idea how much time passes. All you can hear is your own crying bouncing off the walls of all these dark, narrow corridors and bouncing back to you, like a reminder of just how terrible you feel. This is what you came here to escape, so why can't you escape it here? Your thoughts are finally jogged when you almost trip and fall down the stairs. Wait, stairs? Does that mean a way out? It's hard to even quantify the relief you feel going down those stairs, following what inexplicably sounds like breaking tides of the ocean down below. But hey, you'll sure as hell take that over the oppressive silence of level 6. You've learned now that there are things far worse than monsters in the dark, suffocating halls of the back rooms. You take a deep breath and walk into the light. Now go check out the next level, level 7, Thalassophobia, for more information on surviving this uniquely terrifying place.